Greetings out there to everyone in the No DQ galaxy. Welcome to No DQ Live here on NoDQ.com, the YouTube channel, of course, YouTube.com slash Aaron Rift No DQ. Really interesting show tonight. A lot of different topics to discuss. Thank you all for tuning in, whether it's on demand or live. This is going to be a fun edition of No DQ Live, no doubt about it. WrestleMania is now, what, less than three weeks away. Several matches have been confirmed. We still have a few questions left about WrestleMania. Pyro is back. Bray Wyatt has apparently been deleted. Lots of stuff to cover. So let's go ahead and break down the these segments on Monday Night Raw. 2K Tiffer says, finally seen one of these live, Aaron. Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate it. If you guys are watching live, please spread the word. Share this link on social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Reddit, whatever. MySpace, if you're still on MySpace, for the two of you that are still on there. Anyways, let's talk about the beginning of Raw. Let's start from the beginning, and we'll work our way through the show. Monday Night Raw this week kicked off with Kurt Angle. We have Offman Rules who just left a $10 Super Chat donation. Watching Raw on DVR while watching your review. All right, well, you can watch along then. You'll have to watch really quick, though, to be able to not get spoiled, but it is what it is. Anyways. Oh, Jeff Meacham just wanted to say Raw sucked until the main event. Good night, everybody. And I guess he's done. So I think Jeff wanted to call in, but I think he's done for the night. Anyways, let's get to the show here. Real quick, though, if you guys are going to send in Super Chat donations, try to stick with whatever the current topic is until later on. After I'm done covering Raw, you guys can send in Super Chat donations with any random topic. But let's try to stay focused one segment at a time. Let's start off with Kurt Angle coming out. He was going to talk about the Braun Strowman tag team situation, but then out walked Roman Reigns. The suspended Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns came out, just walked right to the ring. No security at first. Reigns got into the ring, was still angry about Brock Lesnar. You had the U.S. Marshals come out. And Bailey is cool, left a $1.99 Super Chat donation. The U.S. Marshals looked like a knockoff shield. Yeah, they did. Maybe that was done on purpose. I have no idea, but it was funny nonetheless. Jeff, good old JM, says one U.S. Marshal looked like Bull Buchanan. I thought he was going to say Brett Buchanan, a friend of mine. But, of course, he's talking about Bull Buchanan. I think there were just three random indie guys, perhaps three guys that one day will be future WWE superstars. I mean, you should always look out for these indie wrestlers that make cameo appearances because... Five, ten years down the line, they could be WWE champion. You just don't know. I remember years ago, Bobby Roode and EC3 were security guards. And of course, CM Punk was one of the gangsters at WrestleMania 22. So the three U.S. Marshals came out. They handcuffed Roman Reigns. And Roman at first was cool with this. He's like, whatever, arrest me, blah, blah, blah. Reigns was handcuffed, but then they were touching him, and I guess Reigns doesn't like to be touched. He likes his space, whatever. Reigns reacted violently to being touched. He took out all three guys. He beat up the U.S. Marshals, which is a felony, apparently, and he could serve up to 10 years in prison for assaulting these U.S. Marshals. But, of course, it's professional wrestling, so he'll be on Raw next week, and we'll forget about this whole segment. We had Brock Lesnar come out taking advantage of the fact that Roman was handcuffed and he beat the living crap out of Roman Reigns. Interesting crowd reaction because they did boo Lesnar a little bit at first and there were a few light Roman Reigns chants, but I feel like overall the crowd was not that hot for this segment. The crowd was dead for most of the segment. There was one segment where the crowd was really hot, and I'll get to that in a few minutes here. Um, the crowd quickly turned on Reigns. They were chanting, you deserve it, as Reigns was getting 
beat within an inch of his life. Lesnar suplexed him a bunch of times. He F5'd him. He left. He came back. He beat him up some more. Reigns was put on a stretcher. Um, and then Lesnar came out again and tipped over the stretcher. Um, as Kayfabe Candy Ass put it on Twitter, if it didn't work last year with Braun Strowman pushing over Roman Reigns off the platform, for that matter, it's not going to work here. The chair shots, Rain was just was just beaten to a pulp, pretty much. The crowd really didn't react much to the segment, which I don't think is a good sign for WrestleMania. The, the lack of crowd heat for this, considering the hype for Brock Lesnar finally appearing on Raw and... Vince McMahon even being involved in this storyline. It, it was a disappointing outcome, I think. It should have been way more heated, and I think WWE made a mistake by having U.S. Marshals. Why not just have them be Raw security or something, Vince McMahon security, so that way at least you can explain it. Vince doesn't want to lose his WrestleMania main event. So they're not going to press charges. But having U.S. Marshals come out there and get beat up by Reigns, big logic hole right there. Um, I don't see why that was necessary to call them U.S. Marshals. You could have brought out Bingo, Jason here, and Kevin. They, they said it at the same time. So more than one person is thinking this. Why not J&J Security bring these guys out? to escort Roman Reigns out of the building. This could have been done better. I think there's no question about that that would have made more logical sense. But this is the same show that had Ultimate Deletion. So you really had to check your brain in the door for this episode of Raw. And I will talk about Ultimate Deletion more here in a few minutes. Let me take a sip of uh, diet soda here. By the way, you see the beach ball in the background. You got guys can still pick up a no DQ beach ball 998 email me no DQ MISC at gmail.com for ordering details or you can participate in this contest this week I will be giving away a free no DQ beach ball go on Twitter twitter.com slash Aaron Rift there will be clues given you have to guess the secret word and there will be clues posted on nodq.com. There are already two clues. Yes, free shipping if you're going to buy the beach ball. But if you want to win a beach ball, go on nodq.com. Right now, there's already two clues up on two posts. The posts, the clues for the posts will be news, opinions, um, special features. So you're going to have to look around. But two clues are already available on nodq.com. And the first person to reply to the tweet at twitter.com slash Aaron Rift, guessing the correct secret word will win. So you got two clues already. Go ahead and reply to that tweet with your guesses or wait for more clues to come up. Um, Jeff just mentioned there will be a clue on Talk Wrestling this week, so stay tuned for that. Just stay tuned. There will be clues. I will be letting you guys know about clues as the week goes on. Anyways, let's get back to Raw. By the way, we have 350 live viewers. So thank you guys very much for tuning in. Yes, I will ship internationally, but there is an extra charge. That's why I have you guys email me first. So go ahead and email me, nodqmisc at gmail.com if you would like a beach ball. Anyways, let's move on here and talk about some of the other segments on Raw. The dissension between Bailey and Sasha Banks continues. Uh, but before I get to that, let me talk about Asuka versus Alexa Bliss first, since that was the next segment. And I don't want to jump ahead too much here. Um, so we had Alexa Bliss come out. She cut a promo. Uh, she was really happy about how she put down Nia Jax. Total heel mode. I mean, she was great as usual. Alexa always does a really solid job doing her promos. I, I thought it was great stuff. I mean, Alexa's been on fire lately, and she, she's really been one of the highlights of the division and, and one of the few actual heel characters. Although, based Ash is not a big fan. He says Alexa Bliss is boring, in, in his opinion. So, uh, not everybody's a fan, but I think she's one of the best parts of the women's division right now. Just my take on it. I, I think she's got, she's got the skills on the mic, and she's just the overall package, you know? Attractive woman, very attractive woman, 
She's got the wrestling skills. She can talk. I mean, she's very well-rounded. So, um, and yes, as TJS says, she has a nice behind. So there you go. And um, I should note that it, was, it wasn't until the 40-minute mark that we actually had our first actual match on Raw. You know, the Lesnar-Reigns fight. Uh, that wasn't an official match. It was 40 minutes into the show when we finally had some actual wrestling. Um, Sean Anderson says fans will not let Roman get over no matter what. I said this last year. I said it last year about Roman Reigns that if they have him beat Undertaker, he's never going to be over with those diehard fans. Most of you in the chat room, most of the people watching this video, most of the internet wrestling community for that matter, um, they're never going to like Reigns after beating The Undertaker like that. It's just not going to happen. Um, they can do all these little tricks with Vince and trying to make Roman Reigns stone cold Steve Austin, but it's not going to work long term. Trying to have him reunite with The Shield and all that stuff. It's, it's just temporary fixes. It's not going to help Roman's case as far as being accepted by a certain group of fans. Anyways, back to Alexa Bliss and Asuka. Uh, the match basically um, was Asuka dominating and then Alexa Bliss took a count out. She couldn't compete, so she decided to take a walk. I think I would have done this differently. I think I would have had Alexa actually dominate a little bit more against Asuka and then have Nia Jax run in as Alexa was in control of the match. That way, you know, it gives Alexa a little bit more credibility and it doesn't necessarily mean she was going to beat Asuka, but just showing that Alexa was holding her own with Asuka and she might have been able to win if it wasn't for Nia Jax. I didn't like the way this was done with um, Alexa just taking the count out victory or count out loss, I should say. She retains the title. I don't even think the title was on the line. I'm not even sure if the title was on the line or not. Um, I think it was just a match. But yeah, I would have done that differently. Wasn't really a big fan of that. Uh, Nia Jax did come out. She bum-rushed Mickey James. Uh, she chased Alexa around. She, she caught her a couple of times, but eventually Alexa was able to run to the back and... That was it. That was the segment. And uh, Kurt Angle officially announced the match. Nia Jax will get a title opportunity. I almost said the S word. She will get a championship opportunity at WrestleMania against Alexa Bliss. Nathan Washington, doing good, my man. Thank you for tuning in. Snipe Rider says, all I care for is ultimate deletion. Well, we will discuss that here in a few minutes. Um, TJS says congrats on 56k um, not talking about my internet speed but talking about 56,000 subscribers Paul Jackson uh, former wrestling trivia challenge contestant just sent in a $5 super chat donation so Sasha and Bailey complained that their match at Wrestlemania should be for the title so the match gets scrapped how petty by WWE um well, I don't think that was ever really the plan for them to have a title match at WrestleMania. I don't know if the match is going to be scrapped, period. I mean, it's interesting because they're slowly building up the the tension between Sasha Banks and Bayley. Uh, but they might not do the match at WrestleMania. And you could even argue that even if, even if they do have the match at WrestleMania, it could be lost in the shuffle and just be random. It, it might be better to wait and continue to slowly build this match and maybe do the match at Money in the Bank or even SummerSlam, slowly build this up. Uh, what do you guys think? It's it's really it's really tough to say. I think Sasha mentioned being in the Battle Royal as Spike the Big Bad, the Big, the Big Bad said. I think Sasha did mention something about being in the Battle Royal. And um I'm thinking that might be better. What do you guys think? Do you think they should just do this singles match at WrestleMania? Or do you think they should wait on it and give it more time so it can actually be one of the feature matches instead of being lost in the shuffle? Uh, what do you guys think? Leave a comment in the chat room. Let me know. Uh, the J-Rock Freak says nobody wants to see Bailey versus Sasha anyway. Um, 
a lot of you guys, William Carson is saying wait till SummerSlam. Dustin saying more time. Monk Life is saying wait. Um, it feels like you guys, for the most part, in the chat room, feel it should be um, it should be dragged out a little bit longer. Wait on it, and don't do it right away. Jeff Meacham says he wants to see Sasha and Bailey now, so you're all wrong. Uh, so Jeff's being a little bit of a heel in the chat room for those of you watching live. Um, Ashton, don't make me jump ahead. People don't like when I jump ahead. It makes the video bad. I got to stay on topic here. One segment at a time, guys. But um, yeah, we saw Sasha and Bailey have a promo. Um, Bailey's upset about what happened at Elimination Chamber. Sasha was saying, well, it's just every woman for herself. So it feels like a Bailey heel turn is coming. That's how it seems to me. I don't know if that's the case or not, but Sasha's argument makes a lot more sense. It was every woman for herself at Elimination Chamber. Um, so that, that's how I feel. I feel like it is going to be a Bailey heel turn. Will it work? Um, Ashton thinks they should have turned Sasha heel. So we'll see. I mean, by slowly letting this storyline build, you can kind of get a feel for how the fans are going to react if they even care. Uh, the problem with this crowd and this segment was that they were wetting it. They were doing the what chants for pretty much the entire segment. They weren't really cheering for either person. Uh, they just seemed to have a general lack of interest in the segment. Um, Hamp Connell just sent in a $5 Super Chat donation. I think they should just cancel WrestleMania and start over again when they don't have such a crappy product. That's what I think. Well, they would be bad businessmen if they did that because WrestleMania, whether you like it or not, is going to generate a ton of money for WWE. It's going to be a big deal as it is every year. So I don't think that that would be very wise. If they did that, then it would, it would be a sign that somebody, more than one person, it would have to be Vince and Triple H and Stephanie, all of them put together have to have some sort of serious brain damage for that to happen. It's not going to happen. And um, a lot of people did like this show. It's the Costanza says, what a heel super chat comment. There you go. That's the thing about super chat donations. You can say whatever you want. I will read it off. You can even use profanity. I will say the profanity. If you do a super chat donation, I'll say the profanity, unless it's something too off the wall. So try to have a little bit of discretion, but... Um, I will read off whatever you write in the Super Chat donation, as long as it's not too outlandish. Um, I will not say the N-word, and you guys know which one. Uh, this guy left a $1.99 Super Chat donation. So is there going to be two Battle Royal matches? Uh, yeah, the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal is official. The Revival defeated Titus Worldwide, and they announced they are going to be in... The Andre or the Dre Battle Royal. Hamp Connell just left a $2 Super Chat donation. They all do have some serious brain damage, Aaron. Actually, um, did, did WWE mention anything about the Women's Battle Royal? I know there was a promo set to some awful music. I think it was Katy Perry, but I'm not sure. There was a little video package, and I think that was the only thing regarding all the women being hyped up for WrestleMania. Um, other than that, I, I don't think that uh, there was any mentioning of a women's battle royal. I'm assuming they're still doing it, but they're just downplaying it right now. I don't know. Um, yeah, it was interesting. So you have to wonder if they're still going to go through with that or if they're just going to decide to um, drop it or whatever. Michael Wayne says pre-show for the women's battle royal. Very much could be the case. Akon Nation says, first time watching live from Bangladesh. Well, thank you very much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. Wherever you guys are watching, people from all over the world tuning in, I love it. Uh, Pete the Hamster just left a $1.99 Super Chat donation. Mr. Rift, I challenge your no DQ Q&A champion. I'm assuming you mean the wrestling trivia champion, Mr. Gregory Cherry. Um, get in line, my friend, but... Send me an email, nodqmisc at gmail.com, and uh, we'll put you in the queue for future videos. Um, Greg's got a big lineup of people that want to challenge him for that trivia championship, so you will have to wait a little bit. Um, Chris wants a one-on-one -on -one match. 
uh, David from Gibraltar. I'm sure he wants a shot at Greg. Uh, Interstate Kyle wants a shot. Interstate Kyle has been just getting under Jeff Meacham's skin the past few days on Facebook. Um, and Interstate Kyle just wants that title opportunity. You know what? It's no DQ. So on no DQ, we can say title shot. Interstate Kyle wants a title shot against Mr. Gregory Cherry. So stay tuned for more Wrestling Trivia Challenge coming soon. Anyways, back to Raw. What else happened on this show? John Cena. John Cena came out. He cut his promo, upset that he heard nothing from The Undertaker. No yes, no no, nothing. Cena called Undertaker a coward and kept running him down trying to instigate the dead man, trying to get him to do something, which led to a do something chant from the fans. I think that's the first time in the history of Raw we got a do something chant. Uh, so that was interesting. And here's where the show got really interesting for me. The crowd was dead for a lot of the show, but for John Cena's segment, the crowd was red hot. That tells you something. The crowd, as far as they're concerned, Undertaker and John Cena is the match, the main event of WrestleMania. Um, so I thought that that was very telling how the crowd got really loud for that one segment. This guy just left a $1.99 Super Chat donation. Vince is trying to make Roman look like Austin again. Yeah, as I mentioned earlier, basically trying to do what they did late 2015. I think I mentioned this last week too, um, that they're, they're trying to do the stuff with Vince and making Roman Reigns the rebel. Uh, but... It didn't really work that well in 2015, except for that one night when he won the title. Um, so I don't know if it's going to work um, at this point. I really don't. Uh, Jonathan Smith left a $1.99 Super Chat donation. Cena sounds like a whiny brat. Yeah, I can, I can see that. I can, I can get where you're coming from with that. I feel like uh, John Cena, you have to keep in mind, he wants the match with Undertaker. So from Cena's perspective... His character, he's trying to instigate The Undertaker. So yeah, him saying Undertaker is uh, having an ego trip and being a coward. It's just Cena trying to push his buttons. The John Cena character is trying to push The Undertaker's buttons. So in a way, I get it. Um, I don't think it's a heel turn any or anything. It's just Cena trying to get the guy to show up and accept the challenge. We have Caleb Jacobs, who's also challenging Greg, Greg Cherry for the Wrestling Trivia Championship. I think all you guys in the chat room might as well just challenge Greg Cherry for the championship at this point. But back to uh, John Cena. Um, he got interrupted, and it wasn't The Undertaker. It was Kane. And I think Kane has new tights. Um, they look different from what he was wearing before. I, I believe they had different tights here. Um or he did, I said they. Uh, Kane came out, he he choke slammed John Cena, I guess, because John Cena talks too much, he never shuts up, uh, just like on Botchamania, and Kane just got sick of John Cena talking. I think that was the reason why. Uh, yeah, Jeff, we're analyzing Kane's tights. I don't know what that says about the quality of Raw. Um, hey, I'm happy because Seth Rollins was not wearing those damn Nitro tights this week. I'm so happy about that. You won't even believe it how happy I am. I'm just so ecstatic. I want to do jumping jacks. I want to scream out my window. I'm so thrilled that there was no Seth Nitro this week. We still had uh, Finn Thunder, though. So we can't win at all, all the time. Kfib Candy ass says, want to talk about Finn's blue balls. Uh, you can if you want on Twitter. You guys want to hear uh, Kfib Candy ass talk about Finn Balor's blue balls, head over to Planet Kfib on Twitter. Thunder is now on the WWE Network. Uh, maybe that's why Finn Balor is wearing the, the blue tights as a little subtle way of promoting WCW Thunder on the WWE Network. I don't know. I really don't. Um, so yeah, Kane's back, and next week, it's John Cena versus Kane, um, and I'm guessing after that match, maybe next week, maybe the go-home show, we will finally see The Undertaker show up, and one more week of anticipation. Is he going to be the American Badass, or is he going to be the classic dead man? 
a lot of people want to see him as the American badass, but time will tell which way he goes. We don't know at this point. We had The Miz come out, and a lot of you guys are already talking about the Miz promo. He referenced uh, the indie names of Seth Rollins and Finn Balor, uh, referring to them as Tyler Black and Prince Nevitt. Not Devitt, but Prince Nevitt. And this got a lot of people worked up, including uh, Mr. Dave Meltzer. He, he went off on that. Um, I thought it was funny. I don't know if it was intentional or not, but... I thought it was funny nonetheless. I don't really see the big deal about it. I, I think uh, Meltzer and a couple other people were overreacting to that. Just my take on it. Uh, Josh Mansfield left a $1 Super Chat donation. No comment, but thank you, Josh, for the donation. Uh, Jonathan Smith left a $1.99 Super Chat donation. Brothers of Destruction versus Cena and Blank? I don't think so. I think it's going to be John Cena versus Undertaker one-on-one. -on -one. I, I highly doubt that. Um, Miz said Finn Baller. <laughs> yeah, Miz was just great. I love the Miz. Miz, like Alexa Bliss, I think both of them have just been so great on the mic lately. Miz is always, is always great. Um, I, I really enjoyed the Miz's promo. The match itself, uh, Balor Club versus, um, Miz Taraj. Eh, I thought it was too long. Funny, because th this show was so heavy promos um, the wrestling actually bored me. Um, I, I really wasn't a big fan of the match. I thought it was just there. Seth Rollins was on commentary. And um, not much else to say about it. Um, Balor pinned Miz again. Like, he really needed to pin Miz again. I really didn't see the point in that. We already have established that Balor's the contender. He's a worthy contender. I don't know. Um, I was hoping for Samoa Joe on this show. No Samoa Joe, by the way. No Joe in this segment. No Joe in Braun Strowman's segment. Strowman came out, said he doesn't need a partner. Um, Andreas Morales left a $4.99 Super Chat donation. They should use the 2000 Judgment Day promo with the three girls saying he's back from the dead and then have Undertaker come out as the American badass. I, I agree. I, I like it. Uh, but I, I'll talk about that more perhaps in a few minutes here. Um, Braun Strowman's segment was... Strowman coming out and um, saying he doesn't need anybody. The bar came out, said that they were going to win the titles regardless of who Strowman's partner is. Uh, this led to um, Cesaro versus Braun Strowman. Um, you know, it was an all right match. Not much to it. Uh, Strowman won, of course. And I really don't know how that helps the bar. I guess we're going to milk this thing a little bit longer. Wait a week or two and see what happens with uh, Braun Strowman's partner. Um, it, it feels like, you know, things are slowly... WWE's not, uh, you know, I don't want to use the non-PG term, but just unloading everything right away. Uh, they're, they're letting it wait. They're, they're spreading this out and, um, you know, saving stuff for the... Really, I mean, you should save some stuff for the go-home show. Man, Jeff is just trolling like crazy tonight. I think Jeff wants uh, Virtue's Troll of the Month award, and he, he's, he's uh, making a run for that. Yes, thank you, TJS. You, you used the uh, non-PG uh, phrase that I was thinking about saying, but I didn't. I'm, I'm trying, YouTube. Please monetize my video. You guys gave me that little uh, yellow dollar sign, limited or no ads, for this stream before I even started it. They do this to me every week. I'm, I'm watching my P's and Q's. I'm not saying the offensive stuff here. Uh, yes, Colin Mack. Bingo. You nailed it, buddy. Um, you'd have to ask Virtue if you can qualify for Troll of the Month with your comments in the chat room. You, by the way, guys, keep in mind, whatever you write in the chat room, there's a chat instant replay. So when people watch the video on demand, they can see all of your guys' comments. So you might want to be careful what you say because we are in 2018, one wrong comment on social media, and you might be in big trouble. So be careful, guys. I'm, I'm, this is a common courtesy to all you guys. I'm not offended by anything you guys are saying, but it is 2018. You got to watch yourself here. Um, Jeff is like, don't be scared, have at it. So uh, there you go. Jeff is encouraging the, the rowdy, reckless behavior. Um, but I'm telling you guys, 
you know, just tone it down a little bit, be cool, calm, cool, collected, chill, like RVD would. We had a video package with Ronda Rousey. She did not appear before the live crowd again. Um, so I don't know what's going on. She was advertised uh, for this show, um, but they, they kept her off again. It was a good video package though, I gotta say. Um, I thought it was very effective, uh, Rhonda telling her story, showing um, showing a lot of emotion in the segment. Kurt Angle was there with her, putting her over. I thought it was really well done. I thought this was a very solid video package and probably better than whatever uh, live segment they would have done. I, I thought it was fine. Although uh, SN1281 says Rhonda has been a total flop, no interest, delete. Um... Jeff is apparently encouraging people to get high in the chat room. This is why you guys got to tune in live because this chat room can get really rowdy, even more rowdy than Ronda Rousey. Wow, TGS is being a little bit of savage. Okay, here we go. TGS with the savage comment of the night. Ronda's mole bothers me. Damn, that was savage, man. All right, guys, TJS with the savage line of the night. He wins this week. Um, by the way, we're at 390 live viewers, almost at 400. So close here. And me drinking a sip of diet soda is going to lead to... I should have Jeff call in. Do you guys want me to have Jeff Meacham call in? Will that boost up my ratings for this video? Could that get us to 500 live viewers? If we get over 400... I will, I will get on Skype and have Jeff Meacham call it, and it will be, Jeff is pissed. Jeff is angry. He wants to lash out. So if we get over 400, we're at 385 right now. We get over 400, I will have Jeff call in, and this whole video might go straight to hell. But we'll see what happens. Uh, let me know. Uh, some people are saying no. Actually, quite a few people are saying no, so maybe I won't do it. I'm going to see how the viewership is. If we get over 400... Um, I will do it. If I jump into the lake of reincarnation, would I come out as Rift Aronson? Interesting idea right there. Maybe maybe that's how we could bring back Rift Aronson. Uh, maybe I need to jump into the lake of reincarnation. That's the only way to bring him back from the dead. Everybody wants Rift Aronson back. I don't know why. Um, he was like the biggest ratings killer in the history of this channel. Uh, no, that's not true. There were quite a few ratings killers on this channel and I'm not going to name names. They knew who they are and I'm sure they'll keep taking pot shots at me online. But um, moving on, let's talk about the main event segment, which was Brother Nero says I'm frozen again. Whoopty freaking do. Tom Wright says to shave the beard. Um, sure, I'll shave it off because you tell me to. All right, let's talk about and No, I was not referring to uh, that guy, John Hamilton, although uh, he's just a general ratings killer in general. All right, let's move on here to the main event segment, which was the ultimate deletion. The ultimate deletion. Bray Wyatt entered the Hardy compound. It was late at night. They did show a bunch of video packages. Michael Cole, before the match, if you want to call it a match, before the segment started, uh, Michael Cole gave a disclaimer that uh, they apologize for what the audience is about to see. Caleb Jacob says the video is lagging. It is what it is, brother. You know, YouTube can be a bitch sometimes. Um, Mike Nixon says horrible. It was the worst match in history. Um, Michael Wayne says shaky camera and ultimate deletion. So this was basically, I think it was like a more overly produced version of what Matt was doing in TNA with a little bit of WWE-ness added to it. Um, it's very polarizing. I've seen people say this was awesome. I've had people say it was the worst thing they've ever seen on Raw. I have seen both sides of the equation on this one. Everybody seems to have an opinion on it. Um, I could definitely see people that don't watch wrestling checking out this segment and just being completely disgusted by what they're seeing. And, and uh, some people are saying it was it was worse than anything TNA ever did. One guy in here, Barb Wire, wrapped, 
I'm not going to say the last part of his name, uh, says worse than WCW 2000. Um, Sean Smith says Jeremy Borash had its touch. Um, Jonathan Smith left a $1.99 Super Chat donation stating that Pyro is back. So yes, for all you guys complaining, we finally got Pyro. Yay, Pyro's back. Um, Matt had all of his tricks. They started their match in the ring. Uh, we had the uh, Vanguard 1 um, shoot off the Pyro. Uh, Matt's uh, face was um, the hologram on the Vanguard 1. Uh, they had all the, the gimmicks from TNA. Uh, they they fought in all these different places, and each place had its own specific name. I forgot the names. Uh, there was the graveyard. It was some some name they gave that. Um, then they wrestled in the dome of something. I, I forgot all the names. I don't remember the names, but each place they fought and had a name. Uh, Matt and Bray fought by this old house, and it reminded Bray. He was getting flashbacks to his old... Uh, Wyatt family compound when Randy Orton set it on fire. So apparently Bray was having all these delusions during this match. Fastlane921 says, I felt a few brain cells commit suicide during Ultimate Deletion. Uh, TGS says it was the Dome of Deletion. Thank you for that, guys. Um, sorry I forgot that. Uh, potential trivia question. There you go. Uh, what was the name of the, uh, the big room where they fought with the... Uh, lawnmower so yeah they fought in the dome of deletion and matt tried to run over bray with his lawnmower but then bray did his little uh whatever it's called where he, he's uh what is it called i don't even know what it's called the the creepy thing he does somebody help me here uh what is that move that the bray white does the crab walk spider walk whatever it is all right, spider walk. You guys know what it is. The creepy thing where everybody says, this is creepy. Um, and then they fought by the Lake of Recarnation. And that's when we saw, um, I guess they were more um, more visions that Bray was seeing. I don't know what it was. Uh, he saw, he saw um, Senor Benjamin. And then he saw uh, Jeff Hardy for about two seconds. So Jeff had his two-second cameo on this show. Um, I'm curious if they uh, had more footage or if they just decided to edit it down because of the DWI. Uh, I guess we'll find out perhaps if they edited it at all. Uh, Jonathan Smith just left a $1.99 Super Chat donation. Will we see Husky Harris again? Great question. So we had, um, we had Bray Wyatt go into the uh, Lake of uh, Reincarnation. Matt Hardy won due to the distractions from Jeff Hardy, Brother Nero, and Senor Benjamin. And yeah, Bray went into the Lake of Reincarnation and disappeared. So th does that mean he comes back now as Brother Harris? <laughs> that, that remains to be seen. Um, what's going to happen now with Bray Wyatt? Is Bray Wyatt finally, as Matt Hardy put it, deleted? What do you guys think? What's next for Bray Wyatt? Where does his character go from here now that he has lost this... Uh, ultimate deletion match and that was raw brother bray irs2 says ryan i like that they could do a they could do a bunch of interesting things with bray why maybe he maybe he does have like they could do like an, an identity crisis storyline where every week bray wyatt thinks he's somebody else he could come back one week as irs maybe he could finally come back as sister abigail like he was gonna do until he got sick um Maybe he could come back as the Boston Punk puts it as the Funkasaurus. Uh, lots of different things you could do there. Robert Allen says uh, he left a $2 Super Chat donation. Bray Wyatt will come back as Brother Wyndham. I like it. I like it very much. By the way, we're so close, guys. 385. Um, you guys got to spread the word more. Send a link out to somebody um, so we can get 400. If we get 400, I will have Jeff Meacham call in and give his thoughts on Raw. So what's the what's the letter grade for the show, guys? Uh, what did you guys think of this show? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Um, I think it was a better than average Raw. It was an interesting show. It wasn't perfect. It had its flaws, but I did think it was a, it was a fairly entertaining edition of Raw. Mark Henry is going into the Hall of Fame. 
The letter grades are all over the place here. I'm seeing a lot of Bs, though. So I think you guys thought it was a solid show. Uh, Mark Henry is officially going into the Hall of Fame. The man behind the Hall of Pain is going into the Hall of Fame. So congratulations to Mark Henry. Well deserved. Um, and that's it for the Hall of Fame this year. So no Bam Bam Bigelow in the Hall of Fame. I believe um, the report is that WWE wants to wait until next year for Bam Bam Bigelow since WrestleMania is going to be in New Jersey, his home state, of course, not too far from uh, Atlantic City where, where he's billed from. Uh, Steve-O just left a $1.99 Super Chat donation. Brother Rotunda, I hope Bray goes back to SmackDown. Um, so we could see Bray go back to SmackDown, but I like the Identity Crisis storyline where he comes back as a different character every week and forgets who he is. I, th I think that that would be kind of cool, actually. Uh, that's something outside the box, too. See, as much as people might not like the, the final deletion, ultimate deletion stuff, at least it's different. I like the fact that it's creatively outside the box a little bit. That's why I don't mind it, and I don't think it's as bad as some people make it out to be. At least you're trying. I'd rather WWE try something different and maybe fail. Maybe they succeed, but... I think it's better to try and experiment, do some different things, um, rather than just do the same old thing every single week. So, I'm okay with experimentation. I will always be a supporter of trying different things and thinking outside the box. It might not always work. This 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 segment obviously uh, was very polarizing. Michael Cole gave the disclaimer. Um, it's it's one of those segments you're either going to love or hate. Um, I don't think I hated it. I don't think I loved it, which is kind of funny considering what I just said. Um, but I, I, I've definitely seen a lot of uh, different opinions on it. People either loving it greatly or hating it intensely. I'm looking up the poll on NoDQ.com. Oh, man, we're down to 360. Sorry, Jeff. Looks like uh, you're not getting your, your time to vent tonight. We went down. I don't think we're going back up. Uh, Nelson Moreno just left a $1.99 Super Chat donation. Who had the better deletion match, WWE or TNA? I, I will say TNA. Some people might not like this, but I'll say TNA because the original is always the best. Just like with movies, the sequel is never really as good as the first one in most cases. There are exceptions. Um, but I feel like, you know, the original... When it catches on, like with a movie, the movie gets popular because it's innovative and it's the first time you're seeing it. When you do the sequel, it's more of a copycat and it tends to be overproduced, bigger budget, and it's it just it doesn't quite recreate the magic of the first time. So I have to go with the first final deletion in TNA. Robert Allen just sent in a two dollar super chat donation. Do you think Brother Wyndham will join Matt Hardy? Um, he very well could. We could see Matt Hardy and Bray Wyatt form a tag team, especially if WWE has um, cold feet with pushing Jeff Hardy again. Um, I could certainly see that as a possibility. Who's hotter, Alexa or Mickey? Alexa. Um, I'm sure Mickey has her fans, and I think she's a good-looking woman, but got to go with Alexa. All right, so... Uh, now we go to the uh, wild card. Any topics you have, and for you Super Chat guys, this is your opportunity. Anything's on the table here. Give it to me. Your random questions. I'll be on for another 10 minutes or so until, the, until I lose my voice completely, which I'm getting close. I'm starting to lose my voice here, but we'll go another 10 minutes or so. Let's get some of these Super Chat um, big questions Hit me hard with something. Put me on the spot here. You know, I have no time. This is live. This is your opportunity to throw me off, give me an, an extremely difficult question uh, with, with no time for myself to prepare and just have to wing it and give you an answer on the spot. No thought to it. This is your opportunity. Um, James says, uh, what are your thoughts on Mysterio signing with... Uh, the other promotion thoughts. What is it called? Aereo, Lucha or something? I'm not sure. Um, apparently, he's still negotiating with WWE, and I would not rule out him coming back to WWE. I think it's just a matter of WWE and Mysterio 
come into terms on something. Mysterio could always back out of that deal. Um, they might allow him to do that. Ariel Lucha. Um, you know, I think WWE will work something out with him most likely. It's not a guarantee, but, you know, Mysterio was in great shape at the Royal Rumble. And I think they should give him a lighter schedule. Give him a Chris Jericho schedule. He deserves it. Mysterio has put a lot of years into wrestling. He has paid his dues. He's been through so much, all these injuries over the years. He's given us great entertainment over the years. Give, give him the Chris Jericho deal. Let him come in and out, um, do some matches, leave for a while, do his other projects, come back. And, um, you know, you can get some great matches with Mysterio and some of the new guys, you know, uh, Mysterio versus Seth Rollins, Mysterio versus Finn Balor, Mysterio versus AJ Styles. There's a lot of cool matches you could do with Rey Mysterio. Spread it out over a couple of years. Um, maybe Rey will be Shane's partner at WrestleMania. I, I would definitely not rule it out. I wanted to look up the poll uh, for Raw this week and see what you guys thought. Um, wow, 81% thumbs up. So people did like this week's Raw. And I thought it was a good show, like I said earlier. Um, it, it had some flaws. wasn't perfect, but it was a good show. WrestleMania card is shaping up. We got some cliffhangers. Uh, what's going to happen with Undertaker? What's going to happen with Bailey and Sasha Banks? Who's Strowman's partner going to be? There's still questions that we don't have answered yet with two weeks to go. So I, I thought it was a solid show. And again, I give WWE the credit for doing the ultimate deletion match and putting that in the main event spot and taking a chance with it. It'll be interesting to see what the ratings are for the show and if viewers turned out in the third hour. Last week, the third hour actually held up really well. So we'll see if WWE can continue to build some momentum. All right, Andreas Morales just left a $1.99 Super Chat donation. Will we see Demon King at WrestleMania? Too sweet me, Aaron. Okay, there, there's your too sweet. Um, will we see Demon King at WrestleMania? Uh, probably, it's WrestleMania. If he's gonna do it, that's the time to do it, right guys? Um, he didn't do it for Elimination Chamber, which was dumb, but WrestleMania is WrestleMania, so yeah. If he doesn't do it at WrestleMania, when's he gonna do it? I don't get it. Um, Edward, 001 says, why don't you review shows from the WWE Network or past WWE pay-per-views? Edward, I actually did review every BWWE pay-per-view. Check the playlist on the channel, it's there. I literally watched and reviewed every single B pay-per-view from WWE that's on the network. Go check it out. I think I even talked about the UK ones too. Maybe I didn't, but uh, every other pay-per-view I did cover, so check it out on the channel. Uh, Jonathan Smith left a $1.99 Super Chat donation. Is the AJ injury a work and is Daniel Bryan getting cleared? Um, AJ is reportedly dealing with a legitimate injury and what happened at the Madison Square Garden house show was WWE's way of writing him out of the weekend live events. He did not compete on the Saturday or Sunday shows. Um, there's no word yet on how serious it is. Hopefully it's nothing too bad. Um, they might keep him out of action until WrestleMania, which might be a good idea anyways to let him uh, get his batteries charged up. Daniel Bryan being cleared. Um, we should find out soon. I mean, time's running out. We only got like two weeks left to build. Um, so we'll see if, if he's cleared or not. If he's not cleared for WrestleMania, I don't think he's getting cleared, bottom line. Uh, William Lush just sent in a $4.99 Super Chat donation. What would happen to WWE if Triple H and Stephanie got divorced? That would be really interesting. I don't know what would happen. I would assume Triple H would be on the outs. I mean, Stephanie really has him by the ball, so, so to speak. Um, not the NDQ Beach balls, but, but, but by the Triple H balls. Um, Triple H's grapefruits. I don't think they're going to divorce. I mean, then again, we don't know what goes on behind closed doors, but for all intents and purposes, they seem like a very happy couple and they're both successful. They got a family. Um, they, they, I, I don't even think they would get divorced. I think Triple H would have to, or Stephanie would have to do something really terrible to the other partner. I think even if they had problems, they would 
they would stay married just for appearance sake. Uh, but again, I don't know them. I don't know what their situation is like behind closed doors. So you never know for sure. But my feeling is they'll, they'll stick it out, you know, through the good times and bad. That's just how I see it. At least they, they lasted this long. Um, so I, I think, I think they'll be all right. All right, guys, I will go ahead and wrap things up for this edition of No DQ Live. I will be back tomorrow night with another video to cover WWE SmackDown. And again, pick up a beach ball. Oh, Hamp Connell just left a $2 Super Chat donation, so I got to stay on here for another minute. How big is Batista's chance of coming back to WWE? I think he will be back. Not this year. WrestleMania is pretty much set in stone, but I think we will see Batista come back at some point for at least one more match. I would be shocked if Batista doesn't come back for one final match in WWE, maybe even a final run. I think the more time that passes, the less likely it is of him coming back for a big run. But as KFAN Candy Ass puts it, there's a very big throbbing chance that he will be back in WWE at some point. Um, we're down to 260, guys, so no, no call in tonight. That'll do it for this edition of No DQ Live. Save your questions for tomorrow night. I appreciate the viewership. Again, you can win a free beach ball. Head over to NoDQ.com. There's two clues posted, but they're going to be posted throughout the week in different sections. The news section, the opinion section, the feature section. Two clues are already up on NoDQ.com in two posts. So go check it out. Get the clues. First person to reply to me on Twitter with the correct secret word will win a free beach ball, regardless of where you live. If you live in the UK, you're still getting a free beach ball. And now I got more Super Chat donations, so I cannot sign off yet. Uh, Mr. Dobby33 just sent in a $2 Super Chat donation from Canada. Uh, what did you think of WWE's final deletion? Like I said earlier, I thought it was entertaining. I wasn't one of those people that loved it or hated it, which is interesting because I think most people either loved it or hated it. Um, it was overproduced. I still prefer the original TNA version, but I applaud WWE for the creativity and putting it out there and taking a chance with it. Uh, Nelson just left a $1.99 Super Chat donation. Would you be mad if it's Cena versus Kane? It's not Cena versus Kane. They're doing that match on Raw next week, and it's just to keep, keep the storyline going on a little bit longer, build up the anticipation for The Undertaker finally appearing. Makes total sense to bring back Kane and keep people wondering what's going to happen. So it's not going to be Cena versus Kane at WrestleMania. Don't worry about that. All right. With that being said, I will wrap up this video now. Enter the contest, win a free beach ball, nodq.com. And I will see you guys next time for another edition of No DQ Live. Thank you all.